Hello, Matt. Hello. Good to meet you. Hey, congratulations for your documentary, Cannon Arm and the Arcade Quest. Thank you. Thank you. So how, how does it feel that it's being showcased at uh, Hot Docs this year? Well, it feels uh, amazing. Uh, I'm really happy that, um, like, that people will be able to see it and, and especially that people outside of Denmark uh, will be able to see it. So I'm really happy and thrilled about that. So tell me about the, what sparked you to make this documentary? Where, where, did, where did the original idea came from? Right, right. So um, four years ago, I was in film school and one of the technicians working at the film school uh, was the co-owner of the arcade that Kim Cannonham uh, uh, goes to. And um, he became my friend and invited me down, down there to the arcade and introduced me to Kim Cannonham and the other guys. And um, yeah, when, when I walked in the door, it was just like, wow, this is amazing. This is like, it, it was almost like walking into a different world or a different universe. Um, all the colors and the music and the games that I remembered from my childhood, but hadn't really uh, thought about since. Um, so that whole experience of walking in the, the door and just, just the atmosphere there. Uh, and then I talked to Kim and he told me about the, um, that he was planning to do this record attempt and try to, um, to play for a hundred hours on one of these games. And I thought, man, that's crazy. Uh, <laughs> and, and um yeah the the combination of the whole atmosphere and the arcade the guys um in there who's in the film and, and then just this very simple uh, premise like a man has a goal will he reach it or not i thought that made uh, a great basis for for a film and then i started working on it <laughs> So you didn't really need to convince Kim at all. Did you have to convince any of his friends too? No, there, there wasn't any convincing convincing involved. They, they were really very, very open and, and uh, really just invited me into their world and, and was was happy to tell me about it and, and teach me some, some of the games and, and stuff like that. So... No, there wasn't any uh, any convincing <laughs> involved. Uh, it, it really was just uh, very um, from the outset, set very, very. Um, um, I don't know. We even know how to say this in Danish, but but it was very just uh, driven driven by um, by excitement. Uh, I would say, and also from from Kim's uh, point of view, um, yeah. Do most of these men um, spend most of their time in their arcade, um, and um, and how did you manage to film their lives? Well, uh, they don't sp spend uh, most of their lives there. It's it's their interest and it's their passion, and and they're really into it. But but. Kim has a job and, and many of the others have a job and Kim has a family as well and and some of the others are a bit too young to to have established families and, and stuff like that but but they do lead like normal lives uh, so they're not just in the arcade it, it's in their spare time and 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 then they're just really into it it's just their their passion so they do spend a lot of time there, but, but not all the time. Um, yeah. <laughs> Did Kim's uh, skills in, in that arcade game, um, Jairus, is uh, very impressive. Have you tried to play the game yourself? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've tried it many times, and it's, uh, I, I'm so bad at it. It's so difficult, <laughs> which just makes it even more um, impressive what what Kim does 
because uh, because I can testify it is extremely difficult and and extremely intense. So I can like when I play it, I, I I might last for like one minute and then I'm game over. It, it's just it's really uh, <laughs> it's crazy and and he just goes on and on and on. Uh, it's really impressive. Those guys. They they're well organized. There there was a lot of pre planning before uh, Kim's uh, trial to uh, to break to you know for the one hundred hours. Could you talk about the planning process and how you managed to film that? Yeah. Um, so um, the record attempt that's in the film is not Kim's first record attempt. He's he's tried uh, to set that record three times before. So they did have some experience for from those past uh, attempts, um, <clears throat> and that's I think why they put so much effort into it. They they tried it before and they really knew how much it takes to pull off something like this. Um, so they yeah they were really um, organized and and really meticulous and and. It's Kim setting the record, but but I think it's also. I I think it's just as much as much the other guys' record attempts attempt as well, because Kim he's the one standing there and he's the one under so much pressure, but he wouldn't be able to do it if the other guys wasn't uh, weren't around, and if the other guys hadn't helped him. Um, with all the preparations and all the fine tuning of uh, the machine and uh, figuring out what would be wise for him to eat and uh, drink and, and setting up the, the, the whole uh, schedule of who, because someone needed to be there the, the whole time and uh, keep track of the lives. Um, and But also just to be there and, and take care of Kim because because it is potentially very dangerous, uh, it could go uh, go wrong, and so they they just needed someone to be there the, the, the whole time, and so they put a lot of effort into that, um, and that was just uh, fun to film and fun to follow, and f I helped out as well sometimes, because uh, and especially during uh, the record. camera and I was filming but 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 Kim is he's playing for an extreme amount of hours so so I did have uh, a, a little bit of um, spare time or, or whatever you want to call it where I could go in and, and help and then and, and uh, fetch him some bananas or whatever he he, he needed did you did you find that their friendship had such a very strong bond or is it just that they all want to feel like they they were participating in a broken record well um no i, I really the 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 friendship are genuinely very strong and very and they've known each other for years and and some of them are best friends and some are like uh uh, not best best friends, but very good friends. Um, so 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 they and and they do hang out. They hang out in the arcade, but they hang out privately as well. And not only um, when it's when, when it, it concerns this record attempt. So so I would say that they are very very good friends uh, in real life as well. Now for you. You had to record 49 straight hours of, uh, you know, Kim, Kim playing this game with, it, with his short little breaks. Mm -hmm. How did you endure 49 hours? Well, um, actually, it was more than 49 hours uh, because 49 hours was his previous record. So in the film, he tries to break that record and reach the 100 hours. So... It was me, uh, uh, also very, very exhausted, and and trying to um, to uh, find a way to uh, to cope with that. Luckily, I had my photographer, so so um, 
so we uh, we did get some more sleep than than Kim did during all of those hours, but but it was like us taking turns uh, to get a couple of hours sleep and and stuff like that. But but it was extremely uh, uh, extremely tough and extremely boring <laughs> as well, to be honest, <laughs> because it's so many hours and and it's just a guy standing in front of a, an arcade machine playing so so there's not much um uh, dynamics in it during the attempt but then we tried to uh, to make it entertaining and, and stuff in the film uh, and obviously that's a lot easier when you have to boil so many hours of footage down to not very many minutes actually I do have to admit, you did make the uh, documentary very entertaining for for a man who just <laughs> played one game <laughs> throughout the entire documentary. Um, you also had to narrate um, a lot a lot of this. Could you talk about the narration um, for yourself because that was a lot of time commitment? Yeah, yeah, uh, sure. Um, so um, in the beginning, when when I started out. Uh, figuring out how to make this film like as i mentioned before i i thought there was this great premise for the story and there was this um great atmosphere and and universe to to invite an audience into and some great characters but those characters and especially kim is very quiet very introvert very doesn't speak that much uh, so that that turned out to be not a problem, but but something that I had to um, to figure out how to go about because uh, because uh, he's such a um, an um, uh, unusual main character for a film, uh, and then all of a sudden I I figured I thought well. I've just had this experience of walking into the arcade, not really knowing what hit me. <laughs> when, uh, and, and then I thought, well, um, probably the, the, the vast majority of, of the film's audience would feel the same. They might not be uh, uh, attending, like going to a, an arcade, uh, on a, uh, a regular um, level, but but so so I thought, why not invite the audience into this universe and into this film with me holding the audience hands, if you you could put it that like that, and then just telling them, hopefully a good story and an entertaining story. So that was basically the idea of just trying to. Um, to uh, lead the way for for the audience and, and make it, make it more accessible and more entertaining and more suspenseful as well, um, and then then it gave me the opportunity to to tell stuff about the the, the characters' lives that I wouldn't have had the opportunity to to tell uh, if I approached it. In, in another way. Um, so yeah, that, that's that's the main points of uh, why there's that narration and why it's so um, so it's such a big part of the film. I've, I found it fascinating is that Kim is such an introvert and he, he speaks very little, but he yet, it almost seems like he's doing all this for bragging rights. Um, how, how proud was he, was he at that moment when you actually, uh, you know, filmed all this. Yeah, um, um, and th that's actually a very good question because because he is very introverted and he's very very he's a very humble guy, so he does appreciate that he is very good at at this game and a lot of other games uh, at the same time actually, and he is like uh, he's renowned within the, the arcade, uh, like the global arcade community, everybody knows him, like the hardcore arcade uh, players. 
uh, in the US and Australia and all over. So, so, uh, so he does enjoy the attention and he does, and obviously he wants to set the record and he wants to be the best, but at the same time, he's extremely humble uh, in his nature. So, so, so I think he's happy that, that he's very good, but, but, but he's not someone who walks around and uh, saying, oh, wow, I'm so good at this. I, I'm, I'm just the, the Jairus King, as Svava says, mentions in, in the film. Um, yeah, so, so it's kind of, uh, he's very good and enjoys that, but he's very humble at the same time. And and one more thing, um, um, not not to spoil anything, but uh, but you also filmed um, him the second time, another time around. Mm -hmm. Could you talk about uh, the the second time around? And did uh, and did you do something different for yourself? Uh, the second time around, it was. It was more or less, I did more or less the same, but in two uh, quite different ways. Obviously, I had the experience from having filmed him for a long time, uh, like him standing that machine for, for a long time. I, I tried that before and also him doing some training and, and stuff like that. So I knew what angles and stuff like that, that I liked and knew what angles worked and how I wanted to put it all together, basically. And also I was, the second time around, I was alone. So I had to, that was, that was just me without my DOP. That, so there wasn't much sleep there, uh, <laughs> a little bit sleep, but next to Kim so I could be there if something happened or if I needed to uh, grab my camera and, and film. So uh, the second time around was was tough. <laughs> that was really tough. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me wrap it up with one more question for you, Matt. Mm -hmm. um, when audiences get the chance to see this film, what mm -hmm. is the one most important lesson or take that you, the, that you hope that they walk away after watching your documentary? Right. I think... I would be very, very happy if, if the audience walks away with the feeling of having, having gotten to know these persons in the film, not just as, as characters, not, not just as, as someone who looks a bit funny, but, but actually gotten to know them and, and feels that like they know some of their backstory and maybe why they they their interests are like this or maybe why they they're behaving in certain ways and then it just i'm really hoping that that the audience will have a much more nuanced uh view of of all of the characters in in the film and not only kim uh because i, I think it's so important i think today in our world is so uh so fragmented and and we just we see someone and instantly we think we know everything about them because of all of our prejudices that comes from the news and uh, whatever. So, so I'm really hoping that the audience will will consider that there's more to a person that than what meets the eye. Yeah. Excellent. Well, man, say congratulations for Canon Arm and the Arcade Quest. And thank you uh, for uh, speaking with us about uh, your documentary. Thank you.